to the world of Tai Chi and Qi Kung, led by Grandmaster Dennis Kelly, five-time world martial arts champion, author of The Six Steps to the Fountain of Youth, certified personal trainer, sport nutritionist, and heart math peak performance coach. You are about to enter into a whole new world of essentials in relaxation, improved focus, concentration, balance, muscle strength, and an overall sense of well-being and life balance. The Golden Warrior Fitness Program has five parts to it. The first part is the chair exercises. We have the chair exercise because some of the places where we teach our people are physically at disadvantage in some sense, and it gives them the security of sitting down, even though a small part of our program is the chairs. And it consists of standing exercises, it consists of what we call six quick fix movements of Qigong, and also the dynamic fusion, which is one of the one of the best exercise programs I've ever seen for all fitness levels and ages. And then number five is the what we call the freestyle Qigong, where those of you that want to upgrade your immune system, want to be able to relax if you're having a nervous bad day for whatever reason, the freestyle Qigong is excellent. Okay. Now we'll begin with the first of the chair exercises. And we call this the bright morning. Every morning you wake up, sit on the edge of the bed and do a couple dozen of these. And it really is great for the lower back and getting the body going. So we're going to do actually 30 of these. Just follow me. for this and why this is such an important exercise to do. Most people, when they get past a certain age, everybody has lower back problems or even middle back and upper back problems. What this does, it helps lubricate the spinal column because all night long when we're sleeping, we're perspiring. In fact, our body is sort of dehydrated, if you want to call it that. And this really gets the body off to a good start. As you know, when you get up in the morning, a lot of times we have those aches and pains. This can eliminate a lot of that. Also, we've had students that come back and said that over a period of time, they don't have any more back problems. So I recommend doing this the first thing in the morning when you wake up, sit on the edge of the bed, and do 24 to 30 of these. All right, put out your right foot. First step is to circle it. Clockwise, the bigger the circle, the better. And of course, the object is to do this without moving your leg. Because in time, we tend to lose our connection from the motor nerves of the head down to the ankles and feet. Plus, our ankles become weakened with age. And what we're doing now is not only developing flexibility, but also ankle strength, which helps prevent falls. Then let's reverse. And even if you're a fine-tuned athlete, when you're watching TV or just sitting there doing nothing, this is a good exercise to do to keep ourselves in tune. And then push down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And if you have billet of water in the legs, we call this the pump. Sometimes by doing this exercise, everybody's different. It helps eliminate that challenge. And then what we want to do after that is go in, out, in, out. Go in as far as you can, out as far as you can, both sides. All right, then we use the next movement, the left foot, of course. Rotate clockwise. And again, the bigger the circle, the better. Now counterclockwise. All right, now push down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, 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 out. Now put up both feet, tighten up the tummy, get a little bit of tummy work out here, and work in those abs, and rotate both at the same time. One should be going clockwise, and one should be going counterclockwise. And again, the bigger the circle, the better. Now reverse. All right, now push down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Then in, out, in, out, keep that tummy tight, out, in, out. And then we put our feet flat on the floor, hands on the thighs, 
We're going to do five heel raises. On the fifth one, we're going to hold for about five seconds. We'll do several sets, and then we will do ten heel raises and hold for ten seconds. Now, I want you to raise your heels as high as you can. In this case, no pain, no gain. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, and five. Hold it there. And again, one, two, three, four, and hold it there. And again, one, two, three, four, and hold it there. And now we're going to do ten and hold for ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, now grab one of your knees like this and pull it up as far as you can. Let's see if you can touch your knee with your nose. If not, at least go in that direction, or if you can pick your foot up off the floor, you're doing good uh, compared to some people. All right, and of course, you, <laughs> if you have a big nose, that's cheating. Let's try it again. All right, now let's do the other side. And don't feel bad if this is as far as you can. Each week, go a little bit further, because the further we get, the younger we get. All right, now we're going to do a thing called the Chinese hand torture. I call it that because by the time you get to 30 seconds, you know you're going to know what I mean. This is this will help you open the pickle jar a little bit better. Here we go. 30 seconds. Fast as hard as you can. Seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Now shake them. Don't break them. Shake them up here. Shake them down here. Shake them over here. Now rub them together. Get some heat going. That heat is called chi, a form of chi, which means energy and breath in English. And fold the fingers, crunch them back and forth like this. Very good if you got arthritis of the hands or any weakness of the fingers or hands. This is always good to strengthen the grip. Okay, now we're going to reach for the chi. The higher we reach, the stronger the chi. It's just like the best apples are the one where people haven't got to yet. And reach over here, reach for here. And of course, the good thing about the chi is free. No charge for the chi, which means energy. All right, that concludes our chair exercises. Thank you, and hope you enjoyed that half as much as I did. Okay, now we're ready to do our warm-up exercises. We do this before every class, whether it be the most advanced class or a brand new beginning class. It's important to warm up all the muscles, tendons, and ligaments in the body before we're doing our first movement of Qigong and Tai Chi. So the first one is put your feet shoulder width apart. All right, flex your knees, tuck in your tush, turn your waist, and let the arms come along for the ride. We call this the Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Andy warm-up. It's one of the oldest recorded exercises this comes back several thousand years in India. They did this one every single day. And relax the body. Think of the dog wags the tail. The tail doesn't wag the dog. Loose like a goose. But the back of the hand, like I mentioned, hit the opposite side of the tush. All right, now with your feet double shoulder with flex your knees. And again, tuck in your tush. If you don't flex your knees, you're going to hate me tomorrow when you wake up with sore knees. So I don't want that to happen. So turn your waist and again let the arms come along for the ride. And make sure you let the head move with the body. Just relax. Just let your arms flap loosely. Just like I mentioned, the dog wags the tail, the tail doesn't wag the dog. All right, now put your feet shoulders width, hands on the hips, and let's do the hula. We call this the hula hoop. This is great because what we're doing is we're getting rid of toxic buildup in the joints, in the, the cartilage, and it gets rid of that toxic buildup. And then the synovial fluid, which is the food for the cartilage, gets in there and not only lubricates the joint, but it also, in reverse, it also is the food for the cartilage. So when you do not exercise and are sedentary, that cartilage deteriorates much faster, and that's where a lot of hip replacements come from. So it's a little simple movement can help possibly prevent a hip replacement. All right, arms out here, little tiny circles. You want little circles, not big circles. Big circles can irritate the rotor cuff. Little circles will massage the rotor cuff. And reverse. All right, palms up with little circles. 
and reverse it with a little circle. The women like this one because it firms up this area. All right, then the next one is my mother's favorite. She's up in heaven teaching all the angels to do this now. We call this the Bernice Special, named after her because she had arthritis of the hands and the shoulders. And when she would come to my Tai Chi classes, if I forget to do this warm up, she'd fuss at me all the way home in a nice way. So she's up there now teaching angels how to do the Bernice Special. In fact, the Chinese doctors that practice Qigong have most of the patients doing this every day at least a couple dozen times. If you ever feel lethargic, need a little extra octane in your tank, do a couple dozen of these, and it could wake you up. Creates a certain amount of bioelectricity in the body that, of course, is very healthy for the cells. And, of course, with healthy cells, you have a healthy person. Now push out the wall, stretch that body. Don't cheat, I mean, I really push hard. All right, now push up the walls. This is a stick up, reach for the sky. All right, now we have the vertebrae adjustment over here, over there, over here, over there. And by the way, if there's something that is what we're doing is something is too painful, just don't do it. There'll be enough that you can do without worrying about what you can't do. Okay, hold your fingers like this. Palms out, then gently each side, back and forth, and forth and back, and just relax. Make sure your knees are flexed. That is so important. All right, now above the head. Side to side, gently, flow with it. You don't want to jerk it, you want to be a smoothie. All right, now a little chubby checker twist. All right, now clasp the hands behind the back, pull those shoulders way back, turn your head both ways, just like this, just like a windshield wiper, back and forth and forth and back, then up and down. Side to side. All right, we're going to do what we call a little dynamic tension now. In fact, this is great because what we're doing now, getting into the imagination. Uh, when I, Albert Einstein was on his deathbed, the reporters came and asked Professor Einstein, what is the strongest force in the universe? Is it E equals MC squared? And without any hesitation, they had their notes ready to take the, this down, this words of wisdom. Uh, he said the strongest force in the universe is the imagination, the power of imagination. So what we're going to do in the next one, which is getting us ready to use that wonderful imagination we sort of lose along the way, uh, is called dynamic tension. And we're going to imagine as we do this, with every pull, we're going to get a little bit stronger. So inhale as we come up, make two fists, turn them over, and pull. Now imagine you're pulling several hundred. If you really want to get there in several thousand pounds, and imagine you're getting stronger with every pull. Let's do that two more times. Make two fists, turn them over, and pull. And on the last one, you might add a, a little bit of theatrics to it with a little bit of growl. All right, we do that in our class. We have a lot of fun with that. All right, the next one is serving the tea. We call this winging it. We have two cups of tea here. We're serving it behind us without spilling it. This aligns the shoulder ligaments, and the tendon is very, very good for those areas, the upper part of the back and middle back. And we've got one more serving. Don't spill it now. In fact, I would recommend at home just practicing with a couple paper cups or, or plastic cups and hold them in your hand and see if you can go back there and do this without them falling because it really helps the alignment and it'll help you when you get to your Qigong and Tai Chi. Okay, after that one, we have what we call the punching bag. We're going to do four counts slow. Eight count slow, then we're going to speed it up. So careful you don't hit yourself in the chin. This is designed to increase upper body strength. The boxers use this all the time. And also to be able to develop hand-eye coordination, which we all could use a little occasionally. All right, here we go. Follow me. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and a two and a three and a four. Now we're going to do eight slow. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Now four comes fast. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now for you super fasters. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a good warm up. All right, hands on the knees. Rotate clockwise. Now counterclockwise. 
Make sure your feet are shoulders width apart. You never want to do this one with your feet together. It messes up the knees. All right, next thing we're going to do is called the suitcase trick. All right, put your feet double or triple shoulders width apart, toes pointed towards the corner. By the way, anytime you do a squat or bend down in Tai Chi or Qi Kong, make sure your toes are always pointed towards the corner so the knees go out, go out over the toes. All right, this one here, I want you to use your imagination. We have a small suitcase way down here, a medium-sized suitcase, or a large suitcase. The object is to pick up the two suitcases, all right, without bending forward. All right, so we go down, we'll pick up the large one, if you want, and exhale as we go up. Then the medium one, exhale as we go up. And if that is about as far as you want to go, without, if you've got too much pain, don't go any further. And then those of you that are flexible, go down and pick up the small one. And then those of you that can only go down a little bit, the best thing to do is do it with the technique so you don't lean forward. And take each step at a time, each week go down a little bit further. Because the further we go, in a way, the younger we get biologically in a sense. There's a lot of correlation between flexibility and our age, our biological age. Okay, the next one is called the Shim Shin Key. And that this, the key to this is to relax the upper body, meaning we sort of traumatize the lower body there. Remember, the legs are the pump of the heart. That's why picking up the suitcase is such an important part of our program. Okay, this is called Shim Shin Chi. This is Shim Shin Chi was developed by a Korean master named Jung Ri. Great exercise for loosening up the body, getting the attention in the neck. So follow me. Inhale as we come up through the nose. Turn the palm outward. Exhale as we go as far as we can comfortably. Inhale as we come back, exhale as we float down. And picture the arm with the helium balloon tied to the wrist, coming up effortlessly, turn the palm out, follow that hand, and as you come back, picture the hand floating down like leaves off of a tree. That sort of prepares you for what we do in Qigong. Okay, the next one is the vertebrae massage. Stick out your left thumb, grab it with your right fist. Put the fingertips over your right fist, take a deep breath in through the nose. We'll explain a little bit further on why that's so important. Then exhale as we go down. This is very important with the upper body first, one vertebrae at a time. And when you get down to as far as you can go comfortably, then push your fist towards the floor. Then as you come up, this is important, come up with the lower back, middle back, and upper back. Years ago, they used to teach an exercise called touching your toes like this. And then they, a lot of the physiologists took it out because it put too much stress on the lower lumbar section. So when you bend over, starting with the upper body, like compressed, like an accordion, and going down that way and then coming up with the lower back first, middle back last, you're not putting that strain on the lumbar section. It's very healthy for the back. And most people have back problems, so anything we do to help the back, obviously, is well intended. Okay, the next one we're going to do is called the double cross. Now, if you feel like you're going to fall, just put your feet together. But those of you that feel like you will be able to stand up without falling, cross your left over your right, keep both legs straight, wind down with the upper body first, one vertebrae at a time, just like we did with the vertebrae massage. Then come up with the lower back, middle back, and upper back. Then cross the right over the left, same thing. Go down with the upper body, middle back, lower back, and then up with the lower now, the next one is called wing. We named it winging it. Now, this one would be very careful. Only go as far as you feel comfortable. Put your feet as far apart as you feel comfortable. Then reach through with the back of your hand as far as you feel comfortable. And then come up for air. Here we go. One more warm up to do. We're ready to get into the really wonderful world of Qi Kong. It's called shooting the tiger with the bow. The purpose of this next one is to coordinate upper and lower body and really develop some good posture and good habits in your Tai Chi and Qi Kong. Okay, now we're going to start with our left foot and go towards the corner. Step towards the corner, hold the ball, come back together again. Make sure your posture is up, tuck in your tush, arch your back, pull that ball. And one more time, notice I'm Shoot like a gun here, that's an optional thing if you want to do that. You don't have to do that if you feel like you can. It's like rubbing your tummy and patting your head, but that's just the system that all the instructors do it just to sort of show off. Here we go, let's do it again. All right, now let's do the other side. I was kidding about that. 
Go to the right, pull the ball. Back together again. Go to the right, pull the ball. Notice I'm tucked in, in my tush and arching my back. My head is looking straight and I'm shooting straight. All right, let's do that one more time. Pull the ball. Really stretch that body. And that concludes our warm-up exercises standing. Thank you. All right, now we're ready for the exciting exercise called Qi Kong. Qi Kong goes back centuries ago and kept secret, passed on through the families. And just recently, within the last 20, 30 years, Qi Kong has drifted into this country. I've been fortunate enough to have instructors that shared these secrets with me many years ago, before anybody in the area had these techniques of Qi Kong. And what I did over the period of the years, because there's over 2,000 styles of Qi Kong in China alone, I cherry picked some of the best movements for different situations. And beside a regular Qi Kong and Tai Chi curriculum, we have what we call our six quick fixes. The object of this is to say, for example, you really feel stressed out and you really need to go do something very important. You don't have time to go through the whole warm-up routine. Or you can do what I call the quick fix. So the first one we do is called five element warm-up. This one is to reduce stress. Then we have a movement called bring the lotus to the temple. Beautiful movement using the knowledge of the sacred flower, the lotus, which the, the practitioners of Qigong believe that this flower has healing potential to it. Or rather it does or not, we know one thing that the power of imagination does. Disease cannot live in the body that the chi energy, get the energy flowing through the meridians quickly to ignite those cells like a bolt torch rather than a match. Then the next one is called centering for focus, control. If you watch the Olympics just recently, the, the uh, athletes that won the gold were the ones who were the most focused. So we have the movement and it's called the, uh, it's called focusing, centering. And this movement is really, really exciting when it comes to being able ability to focus, concentrate, and not allow all the garbage to stop there and interfere with our thinking. Then the next one that we have is called the press. And the press is excellent for developing upper body strength, for getting rid of tension in the shoulder, or also being able to get rid of any migraine headaches you might have. We've been very successful using the press for that element. It doesn't usually help the sinus headaches, but in most cases with migraine headaches. So you got a combination of each of these movements have specific benefits, but they all overlap. All of them reduce stress, all of them increase your strength and health and well-being. Then the number five is called the waves. Learn to control your body. Learn to control it so that when you learn to control the body, you learn to control the mind. It's very difficult to control the mind or the body trying to start with controlling the mind. So this next wave, number five, is really exciting when it comes to being able to follow a beautiful pattern of rhythm pattern. And then number six is called the moving the chi or yin and yang. This one is the, I call the internal massage. Be able to get inside the body and actually like reaching in and each internal organ massaging and keeping that organ from shrinking, keeping it in good health. Just recently, there was research done by USF that Tai Chi helps increase the size of the brain as we age it shrinks. Not only now that we know that we can keep it from shrinking, but we can increase the brain size just by doing Tai Chi. And we suspect that Qi Kong has some of those same benefits. All right, so we're going to start off with the five element warm up. Okay, the first quick fix is called the five element warm up of Qi Kong. By the way, Qi Kong means cultivating energy. And this movement is designed to really reduce stress on the nothing and raise the immune system. And, and it's the combination of the music, the breathing, and the movement that accomplish that. So follow me for the five moment warm up. One of the most important things is to inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. There are three reasons. Before we get started, I want to share this with you. Number one reason, it filters the air. Number two reason, it releases a gas called nitric oxide, produced by the upper phalanges of the nose, and that's nature's greatest anti-aging gas. And it dilates all the vessels. So people that have nitric oxide in their body, even though it's a short-lived gas, experience a, a positive rush increase of strength and awareness, especially mental clarity. So that's why when people do Qigong and practice it, and then throughout the day, occasionally do some deep breathing to sort of ignite 
the memory of that Qigong you did that day, then you're really in a very healthy situation mentally, physically, and emotionally. So the first one here we're going to do, remember to keep uh, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, and the third reason it's important exhale through the nose so you won't swallow a bug. All right, now follow me and keep your fingers apart just like you're picking up a basketball. Think of the fingers like claws. Right, here we go. Follow me. Smell the flowers. Very slowly blow out the cabbage. The exhale should take a little bit longer than the inhale. Coming down to the waist, turn the hands over. As we inhale, smell the flowers. Slowly blow out the cabbage. Inhale through the nose as we bring it to the temple. Exhale, mouth as we push out. Inhale to the nose as we bring it to the chest. Exhale, and imagine you're reaching up to the furthest star and bringing that energy from the star into your hands. Down slowly as we exhale, right into your solar plexus. Let's do that one more time. Smell the flowers. Very slowly. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale. Bring it back to the temple. Exhale as we push out. Inhale as we bring it into the chest. Exhale as we reach up to the furthest star. Then inhale, inhale. Get to your shoulders. Exhale, exhale. All the way down. After we finish any sequence of movements in Qigong, we always end up with a traditional bow. For centuries, the tradition was done to respect the grand masters that are buried in the ground. But for the last couple of years, we've been doing our ritual bow and tributed to our veterans and our men and women overseas protecting our freedom. So how you do that is bring your left foot to the right. Put out your left hand. That means friendship. It means we're friendly people. Curl your left thumb. That means integrity. We're honest people. Make a fist with the right hand, that means strength or power. The fist in the palm and our gentle bow. And that means don't mess with us. Just kidding about that. Anybody mess with you, let me know. I'll send my wife after. All right. The next one is bring the lotus to the temple. This is one of my favorites. Here we get a chance to really use the power of imagination. Now, the Asians, in a certain group of Asians, believe that this flower has some healing potential, power to it. Well, whether it does or not, the main thing is when with this exercise, you're going to be able to use imagination. I believe it's imagination, not so much the flower. So let's use our imagination to take our fitness level to another level, to get the chi moving through the meridians and through the body quickly and effectively with a lot harder spark. All right, put your feet a little bit more than shoulder width, toes pointed towards the corner. Now the lotus, the second lotus flower, grows on top of the water. And the interesting thing, the petals never get wet. The water just rolls right off. And the stem goes right down into the ugly mud. So the philosophical thing about that, that you know, for every ugliness, there is some beauty. And isn't it funny how this beautiful flower, one of the most beautiful flowers on earth, gets its nourishment from the ugly mud. So a lot can be learned from nature. All right, follow me and remember to keep your fingers apart and breathe through the nose, in through the nose and out through the mouth. Here we go, inhale and you don't have to go down too far. Just do a little squat as you pick it up. Remember, it grows on top of the water. Continue inhaling as we come up. Exhale as we let it out, touching the two pinky fingers. That's important. One hand is positive, one hand is negative. That creates a circuit of energy. Inhale as we open up. Focus on the palms. Exhale as we push out. Now, you want to push real tight and stretch the body. And you curl your thumbs so that you really get a tight push. Then we want to relax as we form the arch. Inhale. Then exhale as we go down and pick up the beautiful lotus again. Inhaling all the way up. Up on the toes is optional. And then slowly exhale, picturing every single cell. Be a little miniature human with happy, smiling faces. We attack disease and fitness from a cellular level rather than just a regular mind-body level. Okay, let's do that again. Inhale as we go down, pick up the beautiful lotus. Continue inhaling. Exhale as we let it out, touching the two pinky fingers. Inhale as we open up. Exhale as we push up, tighten up the thumbs. Inhale as we form the arch. Exhale as we come down, picking up the beautiful arms again. Inhale, inhale, open head, now picture.
picture every single cell having a happy, smiling face. Happy because what you're doing makes them feel good. Happy cells are happy person. All right, in our traditional body. Okay, the next one is centering. And this one, the important part of this one here is try not to have from here to here have any internal dialogue. It takes a lot of practice. It's that space between thought called the now. And that's the part where true genius and creativity comes from. Very few people can do that, so it takes a lot of practice. Also, um, keep the hand in your peripheral vision all the way down, even though you're looking straight forward. When we come up with the hand and come down, keep it in your peripheral vision. This one is really designed to develop focus and attention. The power of attention is the tool that the warrior uses to overcome obstacles. With attention, you develop concentration. With concentration, develop spiritual power. And spiritual power is the mightiest force in existence. So this is a good step in that direction. Follow me, very simple exercise, very, very powerful. And like I said, try not to have any internal dialogue. It takes sometimes months of practice to do that, but believe me, it's worth it. Okay, here we go. Ready, inhale through the nose. Slowly exhale through the mouth. Try to exhale really slow. Try to keep that hand in your peripheral vision and also cease to have any internal dialogue. Practice that. Now, on the other hand, inhale, slowly exhale. Smell the flowers. Slowly blow out the candles. One candle at a time. starting to feel the effects of this positively. Now, if not, we still got a couple more to go, so don't worry. Okay, the next one is called the press. This is good for developing upper body strength, flexibility in the shoulders. Also, this is the one that gets rid, in most cases, of migraine headaches and has a lot of other benefits, but we'll just stick with those for now. It starts off holding the hands like this, palm facing up. Inhale as we come up, then we get equal to our shoulders, in other words, our shoulders up past the shoulder, uh, chest, I meant to say, and then turn the palms over, go down as far as you can, and hold it there for 10 seconds. Now your eyes should be fixated on where the ceiling meets the wall, and you hold this for 10 seconds, and as you hold it, you exhale, if you can, for the full 10 seconds. Try to exhale slowly, if not, just hold your breath, and then we'll inhale on the way up, and then again, slowly exhale on the way down, feeling totally relaxed, at ease, free from disease. Let's do that again. Inhale as we come up, top of the chest, then turn the palms over. Exhale as we go down as far as you can handle. And then hold that as we exhale slowly, slowly, slowly. And keep your eyes fixated up where the ceiling meets the wall. Let's do a couple more. Smell the flower. Slowly blow out the candles. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Hold it there. This one sort of grows it. Believe me, the more you do it, the more you can enjoy it. All right, the next one is called the wave. This is the one where we develop good body rhythm because Learn to control the body, it's much easier to control the mind. And we eat with, with rhythm, we talk with rhythm, we sleep with the rhythm. So when we move with the rhythm, it has a very, very profound effect on the period of time on the body positively. So follow me and start with your left hand if you're facing me. Inhale. Slowly exhale. Follow that hand in your peripheral vision also. Inhale. On the way down, exhale, keep your head straight forward, try to keep that hand in your peripheral vision as we exhale all the way down. Now the other hand, smell the flowers. Slowly blow out the candles. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Let's do one more each hand. And come to the front of the head, and then coming down, 
And you exhale and inhale as we come up. And then exhale as we face the front. One more time. Good. All right, we got one more. And this is called moving the chi. Right hand by the throat, some call it yin and yang. Left hand by the spool the belly button. This is the one that I was telling you about. It's like massaging internal organs. I call it the internal gymnastics, or some call it the internal massage. Now here's the interesting thing about this one. Very simple movement, but it could really be very, very important in your future health. Because internally, what happens when we move the hands, we're, it's like exciting each of the organs internally for a big reason. Each of these organs, your heart, your liver, your pancreas, and so on, have chi channels, little nerve ends that formulate or end up in the fingers. And when you are moving the hands back and forth, you're creating a bioelectrical energy form, and that energy goes to the internal organs. We suspect that it keeps them, just like Tai Chi keeps the brain from shrinking, we suspect that it possibly keeps the internal organs from shrinking. Reason is because everybody that I've had for students in the past 20, 30 years has gotten healthier has not aged like everybody else. So I know that there's a lot of stuff going on that even science can't explain. So hey, without any further ado, put your right hand by the throat, left hand, and then just blow the belly button. Bottom hand should also come up on the inside. And also use the imagination. Imagine that every organ is getting vitalized and that form of youth is integrated into those organs. Here we go. Inhale as we come up. A little pause and exhale as we come down. And you can form a little circle like inhale as we come up, hold it, exhale as we come down. Put your mind inside the body. Imagine, like I say, every organ is getting massaged just like your hands were in there, preciously massaging each and every one of the internal organs. Smell the flowers. There you have the six quick fixes, each one designed to do a specific thing so you don't have to, if you're in a hurry, you feel lack of energy, then you know which one does that. If you feel weak in the upper body, you've got one to take care of that. If you have a migraine headache, you, you, if you need some extra, extra energy and so on. And now we come to one of my favorite parts, freestyle chi kong. I use this in every single class I teach and encourage all my certified instructors to use this because it's an excellent time for your students to develop really excellent technique by following you and also extreme amount of focus and concentration. What I've done over the past years is cherry pick certain movements from different styles of Qigong, put together and gave them another in a given name. And we wanted to keep that sort of pure in the sense that you can be creative when you do these movements and mix them up and put them in any different order. And that's why we call it freestyle. And I have all my students, I tell them the objective is to follow me as close as you can. And it's really a nice trip. If you're really stressed out, you really need to relax, this is another thing that you can do. Just get in here with me, put your tape on, and just enjoy the movie. Okay, just follow me, and I'm going to mix it up right now. I call the score to the cheek off. Make sure your knees are flexed, palms facing the thighs, relax. Here we go, enjoy the journey.
don't even know the journey half as much as I do. There you go. She comes, she falls.
Okay, now we're ready for the phenomenal exercise. I say phenomenal because this particular form of Qigong has been part of the secret to me achieving five world titles, fighting in full contact point karate, as the oldest man in the world to accomplish that. And it's called dynamic fusion. This is century old and again kept secret for many, many centuries and was one of the most important exercise created by the Tibetan monks of all the Qigong exercises, developing good lean body, using body fat as the fuel rather than accomplishing additional body fat through inactivity and through exercises that actually burn and use up the protein in our body, the muscle mass in our body, such as long distance jogging and exercises like that. So I can really relate to this exercise because of all the individuals in my classes that have experienced and practiced dynamic fusion, this has been, of all the exercises, been the most dramatic. People improving their golf game, athletes going to a higher level. And the funny part of it is it can be done, some of it can be done, and actually all of it can be done seated. You get a little bit more benefit standing, but if you're physically challenged, or if you maybe are recovering from an injury, this is an excellent exercise to keep the metabolism high, develop lean muscle. And also internally, I call it the internal medicine for the body. And, it's, and I named it Dynamic Fusion because basically it didn't have a name. And part of the reason was it was kept secret for many centuries, like I mentioned. And I was very fortunate enough to come and, and be introduced to this over 20 years ago. All right, first thing to realize is that our hands are the secret gateway to good health. Our hands are the gateway to a healthier heart. Now, there are 12 movements that we're going to do in the dynamic fusion. And I recommend doing six. And then once you develop the ability to go from six repetitions to 12 repetitions to 25 repetitions, once you hit 25 repetitions of each of these movements, then go to the add on the additional six. So you have a total of 12. In fact, one of the reasons this come out of the closet basically is it was found out the Chinese military is using these exercises. And I would suspect that some of the gymnasts have been using dynamic fusion. Because you can usually spot them. They have a leaner than normal body and they have much more than normal strength and flexibility. All right. The first thing that we want to do is realize I want to take you through each of the movements so you can familiarize yourself. Movement number one is our palms facing the floor. It's very simple. What we're going to do is we relax as we inhale. As we exhale, we push down. Now, you don't have to travel too far. And when you push, you want to push with some force, but not so much force that you're shaking. And you, what you want to do is, is focus your attention on the hands, the wrist and the hands, so that your attention is in that area. Because where the mind goes, blood goes. Where blood goes, oxygen goes. Where oxygen goes, nitric oxide, and then, of course, chi follows that. So that's number one. Number two is we fold the hand, the fingers, and leave the thumb sticking out. That's on the inhale. On the exhale, we turn the thumbs backwards so we can't turn them any further, and you'll know by feeling in your tricep area. Then number three, we open the hands at our side palms facing the thighs. And what we're going to do on the rest of the exercise, all exception to one, is we're going to fold the fingers on the exhale, then the knuckles go into the palm, and then the thumbs go, we're making a fist in other words. So it starts up by folding the fingers, rolling into the palm, and then the, the thumbs go over last. So that we do through most of the movements, and that, that's done on the exhale. So let's get started. Oh, there's a couple other things I wanted to mention. I, at the end of it, <clears throat> when we do the last one, which is we pull up just slightly and then down, and right after that, we do what we call the starburst. This sort of encapsulates all the energy. It keeps you from having a tremendous amount of nervous energy encapsulated so you can keep that energy when you need it. So this is called the starburst. So we inhale as we come up on our toes, the top of our head, and then we do this number right here. And make sure your back is straight. Make sure you flex your knees. Because you don't want to come down and not flex the knees. It's too much of a jar. Also, you don't want to lean forward. You want to keep your back straight. So we're going to do two of those. We inhale as we come up. Exhale as we come down. All right. And what that does, it increases the chi, increases the energy two or threefold. And then we're going to finish it with what we call chi, three very soft movements of high chi called 
of Tai Chi Kong called Settling the Chi. We inhale as we come up, we form what we call a bridge, exhale as we come down, feeling everything relaxed. The reason for that is because we've excited the body with so much chi, and this relaxes it and sort of puts that energy in reserve for whatever we need. It could be a sporting event, could be a speech that we're going to give, could be a serious discussion we're going to have with your family. All right. Well, let's go through it now together. I'm just going to do three repetitions of each. Now, here's what I recommend before you get started. Is to do six repetitions of each of these six movements. And then increase it each week by six to where you get to 25. Once you hit 25, then add the other six routine to it. Because I guarantee you, if you when you get to 25, doing 12 of these repetitions, and do it a couple times a week. You don't have to do it every day. Do it, say, at least three times a week. This is not to replace your normal Qigong and Tai Chi. This is to do an addition to that. All right, follow me. Inhale as we come up. Exhale as we push down. Inhale as we come up. Exhale as we push down. And number two, inhale as we fall the fingers. Exhale as you turn the thumbs back. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And number three, open the hands. Inhale. Exhale, make a fist. Inhale. Exhale. When you make the fist, don't squeeze so hard you shake. Just imagine you're squeezing harder than you are. Put your imagination there in the fist. That's number three. Number four is inhale, arms out. Exhale as we make a fist. Inhale as we open up. Exhale as we make a fist. Inhale as we open up. Exhale as we make a fist. And this is number five. Here we go. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Number six, back by the ears, palms facing outward. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Number seven, palms facing outward. Inhale, exhale. Put your tension in your arms and your hands. Number eight, hug in a tree. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Number nine, now the hands are out just like the number six, but the palms are facing outward just like a number six, and the hands are extended out past the eyes. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Number 10, it's like a W. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Number 11, palms facing the floor. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Remember to put your attention in the hands. Exhale. Number 12, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And the starburns. Inhale as we come up, top of the head, up on the toes, and then keep the back straight. Let's do that again. Inhale. And then let's finish with several settling, settling the chi, relaxing the body. What we did is double and triplicated the chi by doing that move, the starburst. And what we're doing now is relaxing the body, encapsulating the chi, so we don't walk around with nervous energy and waste it, that we have it in store for need if we're in a sporting event, we're do a famous speech, or talk to your family in a serious challenge. It's always good to have the wonderful energy and finish with settling the chi. Let's do one more settling the chi. We want to encapsulate that energy just like a bullet. The gunpowder in there is stable. And when the pin hits the head, there's an explosion. That's exactly what we did. That is the 12 moments of Bionai Fusion. To find out more information on the certification Tai Chi Qi Kong program, go to the website you see on the screen or call the number, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions.